court has always been kind of that outlet for me. You know, a place of peace for me, a place where I can just relax and be myself. You know, I used to go outside and shoot hoops when I was down or when I was, you know, angry or different, all different types of emotions. I, I could always go outside or go to a gym and be at ease. And um, that's definitely been a special part of my life. That thing you love to do can kind of be your outlet. So whenever you're struggling right now, you can always, you know, go to that outlet because it'll always be there for you. Um, so for me, it was basketball. Notre Dame has never won a conference championship, not after 18 years in the Big East and not after their short time in the ACC. Back, Grant says it to Bastoria. Back to Grant. Top of the key, Connaughton. Right side, Jackson. Right corner, Bastoria. Three on the way. Three is good! That'll do it. Notre Dame is the ACC champion for 2015. This was the scene at last year's ACC championship, a win that signified growth and maturity in the team that struggled to find an identity just the season before. They would attribute the success of winning the Irish's first ACC title to becoming a family. But only after Coach Bray enlisted sports psychologist Dr. Joe Carr to bring the team together. I thought we needed something new after going 6-12 and 12 in the league. And we had a lot of things to air out. And I thought those sessions was really good for Demetrius. I think he got out of that feeling like, man, it, this is kind of a family. I can trust everybody here. We all made the sacrifice to talk about some things that may not have been as comfortable. And we went around the circle. Everybody talked about different things. And um, that really, truly helped us win an ACC championship. And while his teammates have heard Demetrius's story, very few others have. He's reserved, cautious, only letting his emotions out on the court. You have to have honesty, uh, loyalty, and trust with him. You know, if you um, break his trust, you know, it's obviously hard to get back, and the circle's getting smaller and smaller, and, you know, you got to continue to have that trust and honesty with him. Talking to other people about it has definitely helped me come to um, better terms with my situation, and also just so I can just be myself on an everyday basis. What is known is a young man who was placed into foster care at the age of 12 after some unknown family problems. His father, also named Demetrius, had a long criminal record and was never really in his life. The move into foster care was supposed to be only temporary to help ease the burden of his biological mother, Juanita Jones. But Demetrius would never return and would live in two foster care homes until the game he loved opened up another door after meeting his best friend, Michael Whitfield. We shared a competitive spirit and that's what really kind of helped us become closer and um, our relationship just continued to develop from there. We just really, you know, had a good time and related. The boys bond would grow, playing AAU basketball together and becoming nearly inseparable. Demetrius loved spending weekends at the Whitfields, hanging out with Michael and his four siblings. So it was a tough transition returning to his foster parents every Sunday. He definitely wanted to uh, stay with us. Yeah, Sunday nights were Sunday hard. Nights. Yeah, it, Sunday nights were the hardest. He'd always yeah. put off going. going We'd take home. him late It'd be sometimes. Seven o'clock, then it'd be yeah. eight o'clock, then it'd be nine o'clock because he didn't want to go. He didn't want to home this time. I've never wanted, you know, put down any foster parent because, you know, taking. Um, the responsibility of becoming a foster parent is, you know, just something that's really difficult and you can always respect that. Um, I would just say it wasn't the right fit for me. When he was in eighth grade, he, um, he asked me if I'd put his basketball picture up in our, in our house on a frame, so I think he just wanted a family. So one night, Michael decided to talk to his parents, asking a question that would change Demetrius' life forever. Michael came and asked us if he could come and live with us, and so David and I spent many hours taking classes be to become foster parents, and... Uh, well, we just said, yeah, we're the type of people that, people ask, did you really think about it? And he's a good kid, and, and uh, I knew he needed some help and wanted to stay with us, and we had no problem. We have a lot of kids. Living in a great home, 
It was a party for me the first day I was here. So, I mean, there's a lot to be happy about. But it wasn't always easy. Demetria still had to adapt to an unfamiliar lifestyle while learning how to trust. And so for Demetrius to go from a couple different foster homes, he just wanted a place that was gonna be secure for him. So if I'm yelling at you because you left your you know, clothes on the floor, or you didn't throw your trash away, that doesn't mean that now I'm gonna send you back. I'm just really happy um, to have the opportunities I have, to, to have the struggles I've had in the past. Um, it's definitely helped me become a stronger person, so um, that's something to be thankful for. After becoming a high school All-American at Marion High School, Demetrius earned a full scholarship down the road at Notre Dame. He struggled to find his role on the team as a freshman, but much like he did with the Whitfields, he had to learn how to trust again. Just because of his habits academically, I didn't think he was handling them the right way. And maybe his overall attitude, I suspended him. But part of that suspension was we would come back, he and I, every night about 9 o'clock and work on some things with his game. But that was kind of secondary. I just wanted him to know I got his back through it all. I thought that was very important. And we probably grew a lot during that time. And just like every year since he came to the Whitfields, Demetrius continued working on himself finding ways to take the anger he had built up as a kid and turn it into something positive. Goes in alone and jams it with a finger roll. That's good. Three on the way. Three, go. I've seen him grow so much since he was a freshman here at Notre Dame, and now he's channeled that into being one of the best players in the country. And his life has now come full circle. Once a 12-year-old kid, drifting, trying to find his way, is now embraced by three families. His biological mom and siblings, who are back in his life, his bond with the Whitfield grows daily, and his Notre Dame family has given him the platform to achieve all of his dreams. There would be a lot of reasons not to be successful, but you know, it takes a special kid to kind of have the mental toughness to kind of ride through all that and find himself. That thing you love to do can kind of be your outlet, so whenever you're struggling right now, you can always, you know, go to that outlet because it'll always be there for you. Um, so for me, it was basketball. I could always go to basketball. It was always going to be there for me. And now um, it's not only basketball, but it's my family.